I've been rising hyperlined ever since after I came across Vaxersky's post on April 12th, 2022, which means that it's literally been almost four years. Four years of me using the same compositor day in and day out, and I've learned a lot since then. And so, if I started rising hyperlined in 2026, I would do this. Now, firstly, we're going to talk about the operating system, right? Now, I will mention literally two words, and those words are going to be Arch Linux. That's it. Nothing else needs to be said. If you're a beginner Linux user and you haven't tried Arch out, there's honestly nothing to fear because it's been almost five years since I started using Arch, and it's basically never broken on me at all. On the odd times that it did, which was honestly less than 10 times over five years, any issue that I had was super easy to fix. Now, the reason why you should pick Arch Linux despite being a beginner, if you are one, is so that one, you learn the fundamentals of Linux, troubleshooting, and trial and error all of which are tools that you will be using a lot when you're rising. And not just that, but then you also have access to approximately 118,300 packages, if you include the AUR, which is the Arch user repository, which are basically user uploaded packages. So the users, the community of Arch Linux uploads a bunch of packages onto a server, which anybody can access, any Arch Linux user can access and install for themselves, which means that almost every package you could want under the sun is on Arch Linux. Now, most, if not all, rising tools automatically assume that you're using Arch as well, because it's the most popular distro for rising out there. It's fast, it's minimal, it's customizable, while still being convenient to use with the, the system D in its system, unlike something like Artix, which requires a bit more experience due to not being a in its system that is system D. It's also the distro I'm currently using right now, if I were to show you, right? Arch is the distro I am currently using, and most likely it's going to be the distro I will be using for the next decade. So for the operating system, just pick Arch. It doesn't matter if you're on Ubuntu or on Pop! OS, there are plenty of good guides on Arch Linux out there, so just figure out how to install it and you definitely will not regret it. I've made tutorials on how to install Arch in the past, and they're a dime a dozen if you look up look them up on YouTube. But if you want the way that I personally set up Arch Linux, you can check out the first link in the description. It's a program called Hyper Accelerator, where I show you step by step how you can configure Arch just the way that I do after having used it for years. I, If I were to show you that over here in this module called Arch Ascension, I teach you exactly how you can install Arch Linux and all of the other things that you're supposed to know about it as well, including a very simple method of installing Arch, which is using Arch install. So if you want that, that's going to be inside the inside of the program. I also teach you how to make stuff like custom theme switchers, wallpaper switchers, and a hell of a lot more. So if I wanted to switch wallpapers, all I have to do is just use this particular keybind over here, and that's going to switch wallpapers. And of course, there's a bunch of other stuff that I teach as well, like how to make logout menus, how to make lock screens and stuff like this one over here, how to make notification daemons, notification panels like these with these animations, as well as OSDs, which are basically the pop-ups that you would see on something like Mac, Windows, or hell, even Android, and a hell of a lot more in the system reforging section over here. So if I were to show you Waybar, right, inside of this module called Status Sorcery, I teach you how to set up a Waybar like this. And in a different module, I also teach you how you can change the layout of your Waybar depending on what mood you're in. If you wanted something more subtle and minimal, you can go with something like this. Or if you wanted, you can choose something like Velvet Line and keep this kind of Waybar theme for yourself. As for the custom theme switcher, I teach you how to do that inside of the theme switchers module. So this is actually a two hour long module, which took me just about a week to make and quite a lot of piecing together information properly so that you can accurately follow whatever the steps that are given inside of this module and be able to make something like this yourself without copying a single line from anybody else's dot files. So if you want this, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. Now, the second thing we're going to be configuring is hardware. If you have Intel or AMD graphics, which means that you have no Nvidia graphics card, and if your laptop is pretty old or hell, even like relatively new, but then it just doesn't have NVIDIA graphics, then you're pretty much free to continue. There's nothing else that you really have to do. You don't have to install anything else. If, however, you have NVIDIA graphics, then go ahead and watch the video I made titled Everything You Need to Know About NVIDIA on Hyperline. I might change the title in the future, but most likely it's going to be something along the lines of NVIDIA and Hyperline. And that is exactly where I cover how you can set up NVIDIA cards on Hyperline from scratch. 
So if I were to show you my graphics card, it is, let's see if it shows up here. Okay, it doesn't. It's if I show you in NeoFetch. Okay, so it shows it here. So the graphics card I have on this laptop is an RTX 5050 laptop variant, which you can tell by mobile. And this actually does not require that much setup at all. So all of the setup stuff that you have to do, I cover inside of that video. So if you have a graphics card, doesn't matter whether it's a laptop or a desktop, go ahead, you can watch that video. And there I give you the exact step-by-step -step instructions of type this command, do this, so on and so forth to make NVIDIA work on Hyperline. Also, despite what the wiki says about Hyperline support, you do not have to worry about it at all. They basically caution you saying that there is no official support for NVIDIA on Hyperland and that if it works, it works, but if it doesn't, please don't hold the Hyperline devs responsible, stuff like that, right? But pretty much you don't have to worry about it at all. I've been using this laptop right here with the RTX 5050 for two months and not had a single issue after configuring the way that I did in that video. Okay, now, for the third thing, we're going to be talking about general setup goals, which is basically to list your goals for your setup, whether you want to opti optimize for minimalism, aesthetics, or performance. Now, the reason why you want to do this is so that you don't just get lost and end up forgetting what you wanted to do in the first place. You might start off with a setup that looks super minimal and sweet and all that, but eventually you might start to add so many waybar modules and there's so many different programs running in the background and extra keybinds that it makes you really wonder what the word minimal actually means. I've been there more times than I'd like and every single time I wish that I could have just gone back and told myself to keep one goal in mind per setup that I make. So don't make the same mistake. Keep a general north star of what you're going to do with a particular setup in mind as you're icing. You can even write it down in a separate document, perhaps using a pen and a paper or using Obsidian if that's what you use for your notes or you can just literally open any sort of document and then you can just type in whatever you want for your setup, the general goals right here and save it so that you remember and don't forget it later on. Now, the fourth thing is going to be finding a good source of tutorials, right? Comprehensive tutorials. So in my bizarre adventure of rising for over four years, I can't tell you the number of times I've switched between one tutorial and the other just because there weren't any proper ones for Hyperland. So one day it would be the wiki, the next day it would be some random medium article that reads like it's teaching forbidden knowledge. The day after would be a GitHub gist from forever ago. It was basically a nightmare sifting through information like that. I genuinely would not want my worst enemy to go through what I did when it comes to that. So make sure you find someone who makes good tutorials that are easy to understand and perhaps even entertaining if you like enjoying yourself and treating yourself to entertainment that gets you the result that you're looking for, whether that's me or any one of the other Hyperline YouTubers out there. Okay, next thing we're going to be doing is figuring out the exact kind of setup that we want. So here we defined the general setup goals in the fifth part, basically right here, what we're going to be doing is figuring out the exact specifics of a particular setup, given the aesthetic that we decided on over here. Now this ties back into the idea of having a North Star that I just mentioned. So whatever we're trying to do here, except is narrowing it down to the exact point, exact kind of aesthetic that we're going to Go for it. So if I had to give you a couple examples, it would be something like cyberpunk. Okay, cyberpunk, if you have played the game, you'll know what I'm talking about. Cyberpunk anime with anime themed wallpapers, e-ink. So if I were to show you an example of what e-ink and that kind of setup would look like, something like this with a light theme, of course, this being e-ink and whatnot. And maybe even something like Vanta Black. So this one I actually call noir, but it's very similar to Vanta Black in the sense of the general aesthetic. Now, this is the part where you jot down what you want with your status bar, your lock screen, okay, this is what mine looks like, with your logout menu, your notifications, whether you want them to have just the right amount of blur, whether you, whether you want them to be opaque, so on and so forth. Not just that, but then also the panel if you're using Sway and C, and everything else. This is the part where you write down how exactly you want stuff to look like. All of which, by the way, I teach you exactly how to configure inside of the program. So if I show you where exactly that is, as for Waybar, I've already shown you before, that is inside of Status Sorcery. As for Notifications, that's in this video called Desktop Dynamism. Here we cover configuring the lock screen, app launcher, logout menu, poll kit, which is basically privilege escalation. So whenever you perform an action that requires root privileges, but then you don't have them, that's the password box that shows up that asks you to type in the password. Most likely, if you've used a desktop environment, you've come across that box before. Screen capture, that's basically how to set up different ways of screen capture, like WF Recorder and OBS and so on. 
Then we have mymaps.list, which is the list of default apps, hyper idle to get idle functionality on Hyperline, and the notification center, of course, which is customizing and theming this bad boy right over here. So if you want this, this module is an hour 40 minutes long. I'm not wrong. Okay, it's an hour 56. So if you want this, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. And if you want help with inspiration or figuring out the kind of setups that you like, you can head on over to this subreddit called r slash Unix porn and sort by top posts. Let's click on this button here, click on top, and you can check out the top posts of today, of this week, this month, this year, and of all time. If you're trying to make something that looks and resembles more of a classic, make sure to sort by top all time. Otherwise, if you're looking to make something more modern and dictated by more conventional design principles and standards, maybe something like Apple's Liquid Glass or Material 3 Expressive or Windows's Fluent UI, then make sure to sort by this year or just keep scrolling until you get to last year or the year before's posts. Those are going to have the more modern ones. Now, as for all time, that's just going to show you the all time top posts, which means that we'll have a couple of setups that don't quite have rounded corners because they just weren't around back then. Awesome WM and BSPWM, they, they, the compositors that we used back then with those window managers, that would be PyCom, just didn't have the functionality for blurring, dual, dual Kawase blur, and rounded corners like we do on Hyperline. So you choose the kind of inspiration that you want to take inspiration from, from this subreddit and go ahead and get it done. Next thing would be to figure out the tools that you're going to use in order to make the setup that you have planned with these goals and this document that you have written down over here. There are plenty of tools out there and we can take any one particular category, say, let's say status bars, for example, okay? And we'll easily be able to find more than five tools that do the exact same thing, albeit a little differently. Now, Waybar is one such tool, Waybar, Hyperpanel, Quickshell, AGS, Ignis, Fabric, and I can basically keep listing names, Noctalia, which is also based off of Quickshell, and Dang Material Shell. I can literally go on and on listing names, but you get the idea. They're all status bars. Some of them are actually desktop shells, which incorporate more functionality than just a status bar, but you get the idea. They're all tools that basically do the same thing, but a little differently. And differently is the key word here, not little, because some of them vary quite differently in terms of how exactly you're supposed to customize them. Which is why experimenting with different tools, figuring out which one's aesthetics you like and going with that is crucial. You don't want to end up using, set everything up using only one tool, only then to feel like you want to cheat on it and then abandon all the effort that you put into it after all. So try all the different apps out there for app launchers. For app launchers, that would be something like Rafi and Walker and Wafi. Those three are honestly the most noteworthy ones. Status bars, I already mentioned the names for status bars earlier, but if you were to check them out, that would be in my top three list, there would be Waybar, Hyperpanel, and which one's another one? You have Yambar as well. I'm not sure if that's for Hyperland or actually Wayland or not, but anyway, Quickshell. Quickshell or AGS. But remember, for Quickshell or AGS, because they're desktop shells, you're most likely going to require programming experience. So unless you have that, just stick with either Waybar or Hyperpanel, both of which I show you to configure in this part here. Where is that? In here. There you go. Waybar or Hyperpanel. I teach you how to do this. If you don't want to learn from me, if you want to learn from someone else, you can, of course, watch the video. Just make sure to not immediately dive into the deep end of the pool with something like Quickshell or AGS. Then for lock screens, we only have really two or three major competitors. That would be something like Hyperlock, which I'm currently using over here, Hyperlock, and there's another one called, okay, which one was that? Okay, there was another one for lock screens, but trust me, Hyperlock is going to be your best bet. Just don't use anything else. The reason why I say that is because Hyperlock has fantastic, what do you call it? Meshing with Hyperland itself, which means that if any sort of issue takes place, okay, when it comes to the lock screen, Hyperland is going to give you that magnificent screen of death. So there's nothing for you to worry about on that front end. Okay, so that would be for lock screens. And for logout menus, we have something like W logout, which is what I'm using over here. And for notifications, I'm using Sway NC. You can also use something like Maco or Dunst depending on how much feature and functionality you're looking for, and so on for other categories. So figure out which one fits for you and for your style of writing the best, whether that's something that's minimal and doesn't require too much configuration, that, that would be something like Hyperpanel or Waybar, or whether you are looking for something more extravagant like Quickshell or AGS to get that full desktop shell functionality. Okay, then the next thing would be actually going about building the setup. So build the setup, Watch a couple of tutorials about the tools that you've picked and just have fun setting things up. 
This is the part where the most learning happens through trial and error, researching, reading official docs, racking your brain to figure out what stuff you're supposed to do, so on and so forth, right? This is the most rewarding part of racing, second to admiring your finished setup, of course. Okay, then after building, what you're going to do is actually using your setup for a week. So look for any issues that crop up, make sure everything works properly. One week is honestly more than enough time for you to test all the different parts of your workflow, whether it be for your status bar, for your lock screen, so on and so forth, to, to actually get a feel for what features you're actually going to be using in your day-to-day, -day, in your day-to-day -day workflow, in your work life, as well as your normal content consumption life at home as well. This allows you to test every single part of your setup, making sure everything is working, and also highlights any blind spots that you might have had where you have to implement more features or also gives you room to identify any features that you're not using that you can get, just get rid of in order to make your setup more minimal. So do all that, use your setup for a week, figuring, figure out what needs to be kept and what doesn't need to be kept. The next thing is something I like to call skill troubleshooting, which is basically fix any issues that crop up. The reason why I put skilled over here is because this skill is acquired through this building stage in part seven over here. So whatever skills that you learn as you're building the setup, that is what you're supposed to apply, okay, as you're actually troubleshooting if any errors do seem to crop up. Of course, your best friends are going to be your search engines, Google, AI, so on and so forth. Use everything you have at your disposal. Of course, give your brain something to do by asking it to think of a solution on its own. But if it takes too long or if your brain is just not coming up with a solution no matter how much you rack it, then you can, of course, look up the answer and find a solution to your problem very easily. Then after that is something that I call progressive tweaking, which is just find time to tweak things here and there throughout the day, right? So you surely you're going to have some pockets of time where you're on, you're on a break or something, or you've gone out to grab a cup of coffee, or you're eating something. In those little pockets of time, you might have picked on a couple of things that you might want to change, like the colors or the shadows or the blur or something like that. Just go ahead and keep tweaking those things throughout the day. Maybe even if you want, you can create a GitHub repo where you push every single change that you make, whether you would want to do that or push the changes that you make in batches. Okay, that's something that's up to you. But basically, keep a track of whatever you're changing and you'll be able to get a sort of graph or a sort of memoir, not a memoir quite, but a document basically of all the tweaks that you've made since you created your setup. And that's quite fun to look at after, been, after you've been using the same setup for weeks, if not months. And after that, you're done. That's it. These are the steps that I would personally take after having Rice Type Line for almost four years now, if I were to start again in 2026. If you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one that looks all fancy and amazing and beautiful like this one over here, along with a sexy wallpaper switcher that changes with this transition over here, and not just that, but also get access to these wonderful features and everything more that I've mentioned inside of this program, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.